This week, Apple CEO Stephen Jobs acknowledged that his health problems are more than just a hormone imbalance, as he said a few weeks ago. Concern that his pancreatic cancer may be back sent Apple stock tumbling 7 percent yesterday. And it was down again today, but back up at the end of the day. So why is the health of Apple's stock tied so closely with the health of its CEO? And joining me now are Howard Anderson of the MIT Sloan School of Management and the Right Stuff columnist Jeffrey Seglin. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Howard, I, I found this stunning, really, that, that the stock is so volatile on the health of Stephen Jobs. And this happened last fall, also in October, when there was rumors going around that Stephen Jobs has had a, had, a heart, had had a heart attack. The stock went tumbling. I mean, you know, he's got people. He has turned over the reins of the company to his uh, right-hand man before, the, uh, Mr. Cook. W why now would it make that kind of difference? It's kind of like Steve Job and the Jobettes. <laughs> uh, Steve basically said that he is the guy, so he has not really pushed those other people. But remember, this is a man that changed four industries, four industries. So just like Walt Disney, mm -hmm. imagine if Warren Buffett got sick, what would happen to Berkshire Hathaway? He has not yet made that great leap where there is a, a organization that is acknowledged as running it. He is the visionary. Has Bill Gates done that? Yes, Gates mm -hmm. has. And, uh, you know, Bomber was there for years, and Bomber was a strong number two, mm -hmm. and Gates took two or three years to do it. Um, Jobs has not. Mm. Jeffrey, I think one of the things people find disturbing about this is that he seems to be obfuscating. I mean, last week I was going around saying, hormone imbalance? I mean, I said, this the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. That doesn't make you lose 42 pounds. Should he, the question being, should he be more forthcoming? He clearly knows what's wrong with him. Pancreatic cancer, generally speaking, does not go away. He was first diagnosed with that in 2003. I don't know what kind of treatments he had. He had this Whipple procedure, but that doesn't necessarily make it go away either. So should he be more forthcoming? Well, I mean, the, he, he, should, he should decide whether he's going to be forthcoming or not be forthcoming, but he should not deliberately mislead people. Mm -hmm. I mean, the responsibility ethically is for him not to tell half-truths or mislead people in saying what he's saying. So there's a whole question of his privacy, but someone with his stature... Hasn't he lost that at this point? Well, I think he's lost that partly because of what, what Howard's saying. He's, mm -hmm. he's become sort of the iconic figure who runs this, this, this company, and, and the, 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 the fortunes of the, of the stockholders are tied to his, to his well-being because they don't know who Tony Cook is. Is he afraid that if he said, my pancreatic cancer is back, the stock would just go to the bottom? Well, I'm, I, I can't get inside the head of Steve Jobs or I would be really wealthy. Um, the, um, <laughs> the, um, I, think, I think that is a fear, but I think the worst fear is that he's leaving it open to the imagination of people to wonder how bad this is. And by disclosing yeah. sort of half-truths and kind of dancing around what the issues are, he's leaving it to the media to sort of guess what it is. Mm -hmm. And they have a responsibility not to print information that they don't know. I mean, there are all kinds of rumors floating around that weren't substantiated that now have to be retracted about the heart attack and other things. Um, so he, he, has to, he has to know that by putting sort of half-truths mm -hmm. out there, it's doing as much damage as if he put the whole truth now, and he might as well come clean and, and disclose what's going on. He has that responsibility, I think, to his, to his stockholders to do that at this point. Do, do you agree with that, Howard? Not necessarily. Um, Life-threatening things are known, but everyone knows that that was a bogus answer. You also have to understand that Apple... Which was bogus, the thing about the hormone imbalance? Yeah, that, yeah. You, know, no, no, you know, come on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Street has always discounted yeah. that, but Apple is his legacy, yeah. um, and he doesn't want to get off the stage. If you read his speech to the Stanford graduation about, you know, I am dying. Death. I mean, this gets... He didn't say I'm dying, but he said, we will all die. That's the one thing you can't get away And he from. said that four or five years yeah. ago. Um, this is his shot at immortality, yeah. and it's not ready to go quite yet. Is there a danger in this kind of identity of the CEO as being the company? Well, remember, every great company starts with that. Walt Disney was Disney. Mm -hmm. um, Thomas Watson Sr. was. And then what happens is the company develops. Uh, there, you know, there were a company with a $175 billion market cap a year ago down about more than half now. Um, but you, it takes a while, and usually the first new guy screws it up royally. And then maybe it comes back and maybe it doesn't. But uh, this is a strange statement. As you go through the valley of death, from great individual to fully functioning organization, 
That's really hard to do, and you want to do it quickly, and you want to have the right team. It's not enough to say that he's got a good team there because he is the one that makes the tough mm -hmm. decisions, and his staff is supposedly very good, but it is not yet. Look at, look at Hewlett Packard, for example. I mean, you had Hewlett, you had Packard, their name was on the door. Then they went through a very difficult time with Carly Fiona, yeah. and now they have Mark Hurd, terrific new manager, but they had to go through a few people to get there. I wouldn't remember that name either. But, but that doesn't excuse, it still doesn't excuse Steve Jobs from deliberately misbleeding mm -hmm. people about his health. I mean, that sends a weird message to the people he's responsible to, whether it's his stockholders, his employees, and everybody else. Mm -hmm. I think better to say nothing than to but say But I mean, it may be messages. tied in, I'm just speculating now. I mean, he has a, his a spiritual background, I believe he's a Buddhist. There may be some other, you know, religious reasons that he doesn't for, doesn't disclose this. That that would be good if, if that were the case. Um, but li is. lying is lying about something is not when a he knows principle. the truth. I mean, well, it, it, he can know the truth and not say anything. But when he sends out half truths, or he deliberately misleads, um, I think it was Joe Nocera last year in the New York Times. It was a famous exchange where they got angry at each other and he, he disclosed to him off the record something else that was wrong with him so Nasira can't print it now. He kind of hints at things being wrong. I think that's where he steps over the line even if there's a spiritual reason for it. You can honor the spiritual reason for wanting to be private. You can honor the family reason for wanting to keep it private. Mm -hmm. You can't honor this idea of sort of putting out these sort of you know, innuendos thing, and though, truths. This is, a, this is a guy in a company who, who just in the last, well, I don't even know the time period, six months, have sold 180 million of, of these iPhones. I mean, this company is going gangbusters. You know, the idea that there's just one, it's like blaming the United, the, the president ah. for every problem that goes wrong. Well, that's that Howard's wrong. right, and, I think. You know, that's why they need to work on this transition quickly. But, I mean, the company's going to be able to do that without him. Remember, the company almost died itself once. This is a second act mm -hmm. in America. I mean, Pixar changed that industry. iPhone, iPod, the music industry. So he has already had, Apple has had a near death experience. And he acquired Pixar when he came back from the first I uh, actually it? Bu uh, I remember bought when that he came company. Back. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he was running two companies, both of which were fantastically profitable. So he has flirted with corporate death more than once. Mm. When Scully was there, when he was essentially told to wander in the desert for 40 years. Mm. Well, I mean, I guess, but going back to the idea that, of the technology, I mean, in, in the interim, is Tony Cook going to say, look, we're going to develop this, we're going to develop that, we're going to develop, or is he going to be speaking through Stephen Jobs? Because if Stephen doesn't, if, I mean, if he disappears altogether, that's going to be a weird thing, too. Well, it would also be odd if they don't have anything in the pipeline that they're working on now that they haven't yet disclosed. I mean, that Apple's a big enough company and, and a, a smart enough company, and Jobs has put together a smart enough management team, even if they've taken a back seat to him that they, they, they do have other things in the pipeline. And Cook has run the company for short periods of time before, so it's not like he doesn't know what he's doing. He's just not as charismatic, and he's not that sort of leading figure that Steve Jobs well, was. So the company doesn't shut down. On, sadly, on this, probably pretty soon. Remember that Jobs has exquisite taste. Yeah. <laughs> and you may have wonderful ideas and products, but he's the one that pulls the trigger. He says, not ready yeah. for prime time, ready for prime time. This is the one and no one else has that ability inside of Apple. Right. They are good managers, but they do not have the combination of insight, style, and charisma. All right. Howard Anderson, who I should say is also on our WGBH Board of Overseers, and Jeffrey Seiglin, thank you so much. Our pleasure. All right, and when we continue, heading to the inauguration.